we need to understand the basic motivations for why firms do things. <clears throat> because firms are the agents that are responsible for most of the pollution, not all, sometimes consumers pollute, but <clears throat> firms are the agents for most of the pollution that goes on. And therefore we need to understand what the firm's motivations are. So for the moment, we're gonna set pollution aside and just talk about what motivates a firm and how a firm goes about achieving its objective. What we're going to assume is that firms have only one objective and that's to maximize profit. <clears throat> now, sometimes firms appear to have other objectives like maximizing the uh, market share. But we can think of a firm that's trying to maximize market share as sacrificing short-run profit in order to be able to establish, in order to be able to grab a large market share and then achieve more profit in the long run. So basically, it's not that the firm doesn't care about profit. <coughs> the firm is sacrificing short-run profit in order to enhance long-run profit. And so really, the firm does care about profit. Now, for most of this class, we are not going to be distinguishing the short run and the long run because that's fairly complicated. When we get to exhaustible resource economics, we'll have to do that because the long run is important there because that's when exhaustion occurs. But for now, we're just going to study static models. One of the most important mathematical concepts to understand when analyzing how a firm goes about maximizing profit is the idea of marginal and the difference between marginal and average. So that's what this video is going to be about. Let me uh, start with a simple example from income taxes. Suppose you make a table of income, uh, maybe 100,000 is the first entry and 100,000 and one is the second entry. Income taxes, suppose if somebody's earning $100,000 in income, their taxes are $20,000. And if somebody's earning $100,001, then their taxes are $20,000 and 28 cents. Let's first consider what is the average tax rate? The average <coughs> tax rate is the total taxes divided by income. So in the first example, it's 20,000 divided by 100,000, which is 20%. And in the second example, it's 20,000 and 28 cents divided by 100,001, which, if you work it out, is almost 20%, but not quite. It's 20.00007999999%. So the average has gone up. <coughs> A little bit. Here's what we mean by marginal. The marginal tax rate between these two, you actually can't calculate the marginal of each row. You calculate the marginal between two rows. It's the change in taxes divided by the change in income. Now, in this class we're going to use the word change a lot <coughs> in mathematical contexts. So the traditional thing in mathematics is to use the capital Greek letter delta to denote change. So another way to write this is change in taxes, delta taxes over delta income. Now, the change in taxes 
is the second row minus the first row. So it's 20,028 minus 20,000. And the change in income is, the, again, the second row minus the first. So it's 100,001 minus 100,000. So in the numerator, we have 0.28. In the denominator, we have 1. And so the marginal tax rate is 20%. So that shows there's a difference between marginal and average. You calculate average just by doing a simple division. To calculate marginal, you're looking at the change in one thing divided by the change in the other thing. Now, if any of you guys happen to know calculus, then marginal is the same as the derivative. But I'm going to assume that none of you know calculus, and so we, we won't be using calculus at all. Let me now give you another example, uh, an, uh, a hypothetical example, that um, shows in terms of a graph the difference between average and marginal. Suppose you're studying for a hypothetical exam. And just move a bit. Or this could be not just one student studying, but this could be data from a whole bunch of students. On the horizontal axis, we'll, we'll have hours spent studying. And in the vertical axis, we'll have exam score. I have 20 here, 10, 5. And then the exam score, the, the greatest is 100. 50 is about here. 40 would be about here. I also want, uh, let's say, 70, 80, 90. Let's say that if you spend zero hours studying for this hypothetical exam, you get 40 points. Or if students on, in general spend zero hours, then on average they get 40 points. So either interpretation, one person or or more than one. But you can think of this as one person trying to decide how many hours they want to spend studying for an exam. And this is going to show how they think hours spent studying is going to affect their exam score. Let's suppose that if they spend five hours studying, they think they're going to get, or they are going to get, 80 points. So there's another data point at five hours spent studying and an exam score of 80 points. Let's assume that if they spend 10 hours studying, they're going to get 90 points. And finally, that if they spend 20 hours studying, they're going to get a perfect And I want to calculate the average and marginal of this relationship. So the average first. Uh, and, uh, well, now, at hours spent studying of zero, um, you get 40 points even if you didn't spend any studying at all. So it's basically infinite points per hour. How about five hours studying? So at five hours of studying, you get 80 points and you study for five hours. So the average is 
points per hour. At 10 hours studying, you get 90 points, and you studied for 10 hours. So on average, you got 9 points per hour. And 20 hours studying, you got 100 points, and you studied for 20 hours, your payoff was 5 points per hour. So these are, these are your average payoffs in points per hour. Let's contrast that to the marginal. First, we want to look at the difference between 0 and 5. We have the change in grade divided by the change in hours. The change in grade between, so if you go from 0 hours spent studying to 5 hours spent studying, the change in grade is 80 minus 40. And the change in hours is 5 minus 0. So if you work that out, it's the, the numerator is 40 and the denominator is 5, so you get 8. So it's um, marginal, that means that you get 8 points more for every hour that you spent studying between 0 and 5. Now let's look at what happens between 5 and 10. The change in grade, which is the numerator, is the difference between the grade if you study for 10 hours, which is 90, and your grade if you study for 5 hours, which is 80. And the change in hours is 10 minus 5. So this is uh, 10 divided by 5. Which is 2. So you can see that when you increase your studying from 5 to 10, you, your score does go up, but it doesn't, the, the payoff in terms of points per hour is a lot less than it was when you were in the range between 0 and 5 hours of studying. You only get an extra 2 points for every hour, for every extra hour that you spend studying between 5 and 10. Finally, let's look at the marginal payoff when you go from 10 to 20. The change in grade is 100 points, which is what you get when you study for 20 hours, minus 90, which is what you get when you study for only 10. The change in hours is 20 minus 10. So the numerator is 10, and the denominator is 10. And so here, your marginal is only one point per hour. So a couple of things. Um, the first is clearly the average numbers are different from the marginal numbers. Uh, here the marginal is a lot lower. And that's because you start at zero hours studying with, four, with, with already 40 points. And, and that's the intuitive reason why the marginal payoff is, is less than the average. Finally, let's connect these dots. I'm just doing connecting them with straight line segments. You could connect them with uh, curves. But um, what I want to point out is an important graphical way to calculate marginal. Switch pins here. Look at this triangle. The height of the triangle. is 80 minus 40, and the width of the triangle is 5 minus 0, which is exactly, if you divide one by the other, 
um, you divide the rise by the run, it's it's the same calculation that we did for marginal. Okay, how about between 5 and 10? The rise is 90 minus 80. The run is 10 minus 5. If you calculate the slope, it's 90 minus 80 divided by 10 minus 5. Well, that's the calculation we did for the marginal between 5 and 10. About between 10 and 20. Okay, so the so we're calculating the slope of the line, the slope of the black line. And the slope of the black line is a rise over run. Now the rise in this case is 100 minus 90. And the run is 20 minus 10. And that's exactly what we did here. So what we find is that the marginal is equal to the slope of the line. I'm going to say the slope of the total line because that's what the vertical axis is. The vertical axis is your total exam score. So we know how to calculate marginal algebraically. It's that's called analytically. It's the you know change in one thing divided by the change in uh, in the other thing over here. The, change in this thing divided by the change in this thing. So that's the way to get it analytically. But the way to get it graphically is to use this result that the marginal is the slope of the total line.